uh, hi everyone and welcome back so in this video we are going to use serverless lambda trigger with uh, s3 so what we are doing is we will have a s3 bucket you put some thumbnail we will check the size if we see that it's very big size you will resize it and will upload it to the destination bucket okay this is the use case for this and what we are going to do is we already have a serverless.yml which i have just written we will go through it and then we will write the code for it okay so first of all this is serverless.yml we have already written this many times so this is the profile region and uh, the runtime i think the reason should be us east 2 based on my profile okay i am role statement environments all these things we have and these are this is the function and this function has an event so it will be triggered whenever you are doing s3 object create onto this source bucket and then we have a destination bucket okay so this is a source bucket we have and in this environment you can see there are two buckets destination bucket and source bucket right so this is the lambda node.js code which will read the data from source bucket and will write it to the destination bucket the only thing is we just need to have these two buckets created okay and these are available in the environments so if we wanted to access these environments in the process in the node.js code we will do process.env.source bucket process.env.destination bucket okay and we are writing handler in the index.js there is a handler function okay and it is this is the lambda trigger on to this particular bucket okay object created is the event name and the bucket is source thumbnail generator okay now we will just use these particular modules we will use the shark module to resize the thumbnail aws sdk to access s3 resources okay so now we are in the index.js i have already written the basic code like how we are going to how we write a simple lambda function what we do is we just uh, write a simple function function will have an event context callback and then we can actually get the record from the s3 like from the event object because this is a lambda trigger from s3 so the record will be generated of type s3 record 0 of s3 and from the record you can actually get the key now here we will do all these different things what we will do is get object based on the key then resize this and then just return just upload it to somewhere else on the the target bucket so we'll write a get object and we are passing this particular key and we are going to have a promise from them so once this promise is resolved you will get the data i mean we are getting the s3 source image or something and here we will call resize upload sizes so some function and here we will pass are the data and the key which we have already this is again a promise so dot then if everything is fine we will return a callback okay otherwise dot catch in that also we will return a callback and we can handle it now we need to write these functions okay the first function is the get object right so get object is nothing but uh, getting that s3 image which is just recently uploaded get object and we are passing key and what we will get is so here we will use that s3 sdk s3 dot get object let's see what we are doing okay we got the s3 here so s3 dot get this is get object should be a method and here we are passing if you see the arguments which we need to pass here in the get object let's see the definition okay it's accepting params and there is a callback right so in the param we are passing bucket and we already have source bucket if from coming from the process env right this is a source bucket we have let me remove the smith spaces source bucket and we have like key which we are passing is this key case should be capital here this is the key we are passing and we already know like how to convert these callbacks into the promises so we can do the dot promise it will return us the either resolved promise or rejected promise so get object will give us the s3 file now dot then 
we are calling we are we received the data and then we are actually calling this another method resize upload sizes resize let's call it as a resize and upload sizes based on our allowed sizes we will resize it and we'll upload it to another bucket here we are accepting two arguments so in this arguments you see we have a data and key we can pass this as an object and save object signature we can use here we are getting data and key okay so what we are going to do is we are going to use this uh, resize function right <clears throat> so we are going to use the the bluebird to promiseify things okay so this is reside and upload sizes so what we will do is the bluebird dot map because there are some allowed sizes we have so we have sizes and we have the callback function and inside this we are getting the width and height okay and this is the callback function inside this we will actually call another function resize and upload right so resize and upload means we get the thumbnail we will just check the the width and height and then we will upload it so it's like this function we are going to call return resize and upload another function we are, we are going to write resize and upload and uh, concurrency and all these things we can set width and height okay now we can actually write this function this will do the actual task for us and we are passing here size data all the arguments resize and upload so we will take these as an input and we are going to use the resize function i mean this is like a functional approach writing everything in their own function return resize resize and uh, what we are resizing is data width and height right so this is returning a promise and once you resize it you will get a buffer this we are going to upload so we will call put object and in the put object we are passing buffer s3 file buffer key width and height that's it now we just need to write a put object method put object method and the resize right so put object is the method which will actually upload it to uh, s3 so here is we have resize function resize function will use this sharp module function resize and what we are doing here is this is a sharp module which we imported and it has sharp module dot data dot body this is how we do it so we are getting data width and height in the argument while it is complaining so this is resize we are calling here function resize sar we are getting data dot body and then we will do all these operations like resize i think you get it resize based on the width and height we have and then dot background and all these things and we'll just do a two buffer this will give us the buffer this is what i was talking about this is returning a promise and returning a buffer resolve buffer and then we will write put object right so put object is nothing but the same function as three dot put object instead of get object it is taking buffer key and width right destination bucket we have so this is a simple code we have written right now what we will do is we will just deploy this using sls deploy it will create all the resources we have right so let's do that so here is our package.json 
what we will do is we will just run SLS deploy for that. SLS deploy will create the resources. We need a source bucket, target bucket. It will just archive this whole code we have. It will actually use the cloud formation templates to create the S3 bucket resources and then it will deploy the Lambda for us. It is a little bit time taking process. So let's wait for some time. Okay, so we will take this uh, in the next video once this is done and deployed. Okay, so this is all we have as a Lambda trigger for a particular thumbnail upload, which is resizing it and uploading it to the target uh, bucket. The only thing which are important is these handler functions. When you are working with S3 Dynamo, you should be aware about all these utility methods like put object, uh, how to get the S3 bucket object, get object, put object. Similarly, SQS, SNS, SQS, dot send message, receive, all these are utility methods which we frequently use whenever we work in the serverless environment.